Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation. This presentation is based on the topic weldability of the stainless steel and it is, it is related with the subject joining technologies for the metals. So, uh, if you have to talk about the weldability or ease of welding of stainless steel, then we need to first know a little bit about the stainless steels themselves. The stainless steels are uh, uh, basically these are iron based systems wherein chromium is normally added more than 12 percent and uh, this presence of the chromium in a steel uh, apart from chromium there is a uh, other alloying elements like in nickel or manganese plus silicon, carbon, phosphorus and sulphur. So, phosphorus, sulphur, silicon are the residual elements while the nickel, manganese, uh, chromium. Uh, apart from this like we may have molybdenum and tungsten also to achieve the specific set of properties, but it is the presence of chromium in the stainless steels which makes it stainless uh, because in these steels whenever the chromium is present more than 12 percent then this steel forms very thin layer of the chromium oxide which is non porous, non, uh, non -porous coherent and very uh, uh, protective to the base metal. So, it does not allow the uh, direct contact of the atmospheric gases with the base metal itself. So, it prevents the further oxidation or corrosion of the base metal and that is why whatever uh, the signing is there related with the stainless steel, whatever uh, its uh, original cover that uh, color that is uh, maintained and that uh, it uh, retains. So, uh, uh, we know that stain is about the kind of a spot or the stain which is formed on the steel due to the rusting or due to the oxidation, but such kind of stains are prevented when the chromium content in the steel is more than 12 percent and that is why chromium makes it uh, stainless. And these uh, steels uh, having chromium more than 12 percent are normally found, uh, are commonly found in the three forms and uh, depending upon the matrix material structure, uh, these steels are categorized uh, as a ferritic, stainless steels, austenitic stainless steel and uh, martensitic stainless steels. So, ferritic stainless steels these have the ferrite um, uh, as a main matrix material and which is retained from the room temperature up to the melting point. Similarly, here the austenite is retained uh, from the room temperature up to the melting point and here the martensitic stainless steel primarily has uh, the martensite as a main uh, face uh, or main constituent. Since the martensite being hard uh, this uh, of the high hardness and apart from the stainless effect uh, because of these two regions, the martensitic stainless steel is used for making the components where uh, like sharp edges need to be maintained, sharp edges need to be maintained. So, cutlery uh, and the surgical equipments, knives, etcetera are commonly made of the martensitic stainless steel and where the with very good ductility, toughness and the stainless effect is desired especially. Uh, so, the good toughness, high temperature resistance. and uh, uh, good corrosion resistance low temperature toughness etcetera are required there austenitic stainless steel is used and as a cheaper option ferritic stainless steel is used as compared to the stainless uh, austenitic stainless steel uh, but the ferritic stainless steel doesn't show very good uh, uh, formability and that's why its use is somewhat limited as compared to the 
austenitic and more tensitic stainless steel. Uh, so, it is very commonly uh, the most tensitic stainless steel are very commonly used and thereafter more tensitic stainless steels are also uh, extensively used for uh, fabrication of the various uh, items of the general importance. One typical use of the um, uh, cast stainless steel is uh, like making the, uh, the turbine components uh, in hydro turbine components typical 13 4 uh, uh, cast uh, stainless steel is used. This, uh, be, this primarily becomes the martensitic stainless steel because of its very good uh, combination of the hardness, strength and the toughness it uh, yeah, is used for making the hydro turbine uh, components. Uh, primarily these are used for making the blades. Uh, as far as uh, since uh, these steels are used for uh, fabrication of the various uh, uh, engineering components which require welding, that is why the weldability of these steels become Im of the great importance. So, as far as the austenitic stainless steel is concerned, austenitic stainless steel is concerned, uh, the common problems which are encountered during the welding of the austenitic stainless steel. Uh, are of the two categories. One is those which are related with the welding, uh, weld metal and those which are related with the heat affected zone. So, uh, the problems associated with the weld metal primarily includes, includes the solidification, cracking uh, of the weld metal and those which are related with the heat affected zone, these include the weld decay, this is also called the problem of the sensitization of the austenitic stainless steel and uh, the heat affected zone also experiences the problem of uh, like uh, uh, hair line or knife line cracking. and uh, hairline or knife uh, line cracking and in addition to this uh, the sigma face formation. Sigma face formation is also encountered in the austenitic stainless steel, but this is normally observed with the high chromium austenitic stainless steels and uh, uh, so uh, we, we will talk about these uh, th three uh, commonly encountered problems related to the welding of the austenitic stainless steels. Uh, so, here uh, solidification cracking tendency, uh, let us talk about first this. Uh, uh, this uh, kind of problem is encountered when the solidification temperature range for the um, alloy or for the steel is very long. In that case, uh, what we see? Uh, that the solidification proceeds or starts from the uh, fusion boundary and then uh, um, then it, uh, it then the liquid metal is pushed towards the center and finally at the end what we have the low melting point uh, uh, things segregate at the center so uh, the most of the low melting point liquid metal is segregated along the center line of the weld and so if the solidification temperature range is really very wide, say here solidification is starting at 1400 and at the low melting point liquid metal is of the say 730 degree centigrade, then in that case it takes, it will take really very long time for completing the solidification reaching temperature from 1400 to the 730 degree centigrade. So, this is the common uh, like say iron sulphide is the kind of low melting point the thing which is formed in these uh, systems apart from this like uh, the some of the um, silicates also which uh, uh, are of the low melting point. So, these things uh, lead to the presence of the low melting point uh, liquid metal at the central line, line of the weld uh, uh, and it remains for long because of the very low melting point. So, what happens in this case whatever weld metal uh, which has solidified that it starts to shrink due to the cooling. So, during the cooling from say 1400 to the 800 degree centigrade, 
uh, the shrinkage takes place in both heat affected zone as well as in the weld metal and this kind of shrinkage sets in the tensile residual stresses in the uh, weld and uh, the presence of the low melting point uh, liquid metal at the center line and uh, the combination of the tensile residual stresses at the center line of the weld, uh, uh, tensile residual presence of the tensile residual stresses due to the shrinkage uh, develops the cracks along the cent along the uh, center line of the weld and uh, that is uh, uh, that in turn leads to the presence of the solidification or uh, that leads to the development of the solidification crack and the solidification crack is invariably observed along the center line of the weld along the weld center and uh, <coughs> so especially in case of the stainless steel uh, this happens due to the presence of the low melting point constituents like phosphorus sulfur and um, the lead and when these are present in the large amount uh, they develop the solidification crack. So, to overcome the solidification cracking tendency uh, if the stainless steel osmotic stainless steel is designed to have the 5 to uh, 10 percent of the ferrite then this ferrite acts as a sink. So, the ferrite is formed first in that case ferrite formation results uh, results to the absorption of the these impurities because of the high solubility of uh, these impurities in the ferrite as compared to the austenite the problems associated with the solidification cracking is reduced and that is why efforts are made in such a way that the weld metal of the austenitic stainless steel has 5 to 10 percent of the ferrite and for this purpose the filler metal is de, uh, is selected in such a way that the composition of the weld metal is uh, adjusted uh, accordingly so that in the after the welding uh, we have uh, the 5 to 10 percent of the ferrite. So, in this case uh, let us say like this uh, both the sides we have austenitic stainless steel and uh, so here during the welding of course, part of the base metal will be melting from both the sides say it is 15 percent uh, from this side and uh, similarly 15 percent from other side. So, 30 percent contribution is coming from the austenitic stainless steel and then remaining 70 percent contribution we can take from the so from the filler. So, filler is designed in such a way filler is selected in such a way that whatever weld is obtained that has uh, that has 5 to 10 percent of the ferrite. If it does not happen then the weld metal will have tendency for cracking. This is what uh, so how to achieve uh, this kind of uh, uh, composition so that our purpose is solved. To understand this we need to know the Schaeffler, uh, uh, Schaeffler diagram and what it shows and how it can be used to achieve the 5 to 10 percent of the ferrite so that our uh, the purpose of uh, avoiding the cracks in the weld can be avoided. Schaeffler diagram is basically uh, shows uh, uh, it is a diagram which shows the effect of the uh, composition uh, on the kind of phases which will be formed. So, this diagram has the two axes one is the um, uh, x axis shows the chromium equivalent and y axis shows the uh, nickel equivalent. So, chromium equivalent means it is the sum of the all those ferrite stabilizing elements like uh, the, and how it is obtained uh, the chromium equivalent comprises chromium plus molybdenum plus 1.5 multiplied by silicon plus uh, 0.5 of the niobium. So, all these are the chrome uh, uh, all these have the effect of uh, uh, similar to that of the chromium and that is why these are used to calculate the chromium equivalent and these tend to stabilize and chromium equivalent uh, shows the effect uh, of uh, uh, the chromium and its uh, and elements associated with it on the stabilization of the ferrite. On the other hand we have the nickel equivalent, nickel equivalent comprises nickel plus 30 multipli multiplied by carbon plus uh, 0.5 multiplied by uh, manganese. So, these uh, nickel equivalent uh, all these are elements in the nickel equivalent formulation uh, they uh, have the effect similar to that of the nickel which uh, tends to stabilize the 
austenite. So, a chromium lent uh, uh, will be showing the effect of all those alloy elements which tends to stabilize the ferrite, while the nickel equivalent all uh, will be showing the effect of all those uh, elements which uh, are trying to stabilize the austenite. So, in this case, uh, here x axis uh, showing the presence of the uh, like for the uh, 4 percent uh, uh, for the uh, various uh, chromium equivalent and a nickel equivalent combinations, what kind of the phases uh, we can have. So, here if we see uh, high uh, chromium equivalent and the low nickel equivalent results in the ferritic, only the ferritic stainless steel and a very low chromium equivalent and high nickel equivalent results only the austenitic stainless steel and uh, a, a, a combination of the nickel equivalent and the uh, chromium equivalent results in the martensitic stainless steel. And if the combinations are such that our uh, the points are falling in the zone of the two phases like uh, the four, uh, 4 chromium equivalent and the 2 nickel uh, cr 2 chromium equivalent and the 4 nickel equivalent will be resulting in the ferrite plus martensite uh, and here uh, like uh, the 16 uh, nickel equivalent and 8 chromium equivalent will, will be resulting in the austenite and martensite and uh, uh, the 20 uh, nickel equivalent at chromium equivalent of the 20 value and the 8 nickel equivalent will be resulting in the austenite, martensite and the ferrite. And similarly, uh, the chromium equivalent of the 24 and the nickel equivalent of the 12 will be resulting in the uh, austenite and the ferrite and uh, for the different percentages. Uh, so, this is the two phase zone where we have austenite and ferrite both. So, here for uh, the, the points falling along this line we will be showing the combinations of the nickel and chromium equivalent correspond to the 100 percent ferrite and uh, in between we have the different combinations of the chromium and nickel equivalent corresponding to the different per percentages of the uh, ferrite plus austenite. So, this is corresponding to the 100 percent ferrite and no ferrite 100 percent austenite and no ferrite and this corresponds to the 100 percent ferrite and no austenite. So, uh, as far as the use is concerned, uh, if, uh, if uh, our composition of the stainless steel is say 16 chromium equivalent and 16 nickel equivalent, then it will be completely austenitic stainless steel and such kind of austenitic stainless steel will have the tendency for the cracking. So, to avoid the cracking tendency of such kind of steel, it is necessary that weld metal composition is shifted towards the, the is shifted suitably so that it has a 5 to 10 percent of the ferrite and for that purpose this composition point must be shifted either this way or this way so that uh, so the composition point uh, composition of the weld metal is adjusted either by increasing either by increasing the nickel equivalent and uh, uh, either by increasing the chromium equivalent or by adjusting the combination of the chromium and nickel equivalent in such a way that we fall in the lines between the 5 percent and 10 percent of the ferrite. So, this is how this diagram can be used to show that the filler metal is to be adjusted in such a way so that the weld metal whatever is obtained that results in the ferrite of the 5 to 10 percent in the weld metal. So, this is what is called the Schaeffler diagram which is used to show the effect of the alloying elements or the composition effect of the composition on the kind of phases that we will have in the in the stainless steel. Uh, now, if we talk of the other problems uh, then uh, we can have the weld decay or the sensitization weld decay. Uh, is the problem associated with the heat affected zone. So, we know that whenever weld joint is made, uh, we, uh, we get the heat affected zone having the different uh, locations which are subjected to the uh, different uh, weld thermal cycles. So, if we take point 1 and point 2 and their weld thermal cycles are plotted, then what we will have? Uh, the point 1 will be experiencing the higher temperature, higher cooling rate as compared to the point 2. So, if we see here, uh, if we see uh, then the point 1 is very close to 
the fusion boundary while point 2 is away from. So, under such conditions point will 1 will be experiencing the high temperature and high cooling rate while the point 2 will be experiencing low temperature and the low cooling rate. So, if it is so then uh, under the high cooling rate conditions when the stainless steel is heated uh, to high temperature then all its alloying elements will be going into the solutions like iron, chromium, uh, silicon, manganese etcetera all these will be and, and the carbon all these will be going into the solution and when it is cooling fast um, there is no uh, uh, when it is cooling fast all these tend to remain in the uh, solution uh, but uh, when the cooling happens slowly in that case due to the high affinity of the carbon with the chromium chromium carbide formation starts and this chromium carbide formation occurs slightly away from the fusion boundary not very close to the fusion boundary because region very close to the fusion boundary experiences very high cooling rate and under the high cooling rates time is less and uh, there is sufficient time for the diffusion uh, due to the lack of uh, time for diffusion to take place chromium and carbon um, are not able to combine together to form chromium carbide and uh, therefore chromium carbide formation very close to the fusion boundary is avoided but the chromium carbide is generally formed away from the fusion boundary so uh, in in this case what we get that the heat affected zone uh, having a certain locations where the temperature range 650 to 850 degree centigrade the cooling rate is very low so low cooling rate conditions uh, over a range of temperature 650 to 850 results in the formation of the chromium carbide and this particular chromium carbide is formed along the grain boundaries so how it is formed whenever it is formed like say these are the locations where chromium carbide is formed so the areas next to the location where chromium carbide particles are formed there will be seeing that the chromium has become deficient the concentration of the chromium has got re reduced say this is the grain boundary and where the particles chromium carbide precipitation has taken place so then, then all the regions nearby the grain boundary area will be depleted with the chromium because lot of chromium is consumed in the formation of the chromium carbide so the, these regions become the deficient deficient of the chromium so, the, these areas will be having the lesser chromium as compared to the other areas and that is why what we will be seeing here that the, the, the locations where uh, uh, chromium carbide precipitation due to the slow cooling over a particular range of the temperature that is 650 to 850 degree centigrade takes place. This temperature range is called sensitization temperature and, it in, and slow cooling in this temperature range results in the formation of the chromium carbide and uh, whenever it is formed we see that um, the uh, deficiency of the chromium in certain zone like uh, this is the band where chromium carbide formation has taken place then we will see that in this area uh, uh, certain areas become uh, the depleted or deficient uh, with the chromium and uh, that is why these uh, become very prone for the corrosion attack and uh, this attack primarily takes place in the grain boundary area if these are the grains and uh, where uh, the chromium carbide has precipitated then the, all the deficient areas where chromium carbide uh, chromium has been depleted they will be sensitive or prone for the corro corrosion attack and that is why grain boundaries are eaten out uh, by the corrosive media. So, it, this results in the intergranular corrosion and it happens primarily in the uh, locations away from the fusion boundary. So, this is the kind of problem uh, which is called weld decay or the sensitization which happens over a range of 650 to 850 degree centigrade. So, to avoid this problem basically what we do we reheat the entire weld uh, after the after the development of weld entire system entire weld joint is reheated. So, whatever chromium carbide has been formed. Um, 
uh, in the heat affected zone that will get dissolved. So, after heating to the 1000 uh, degree centigrade and holding it at for 2 hours. So, everything gets dissolved means these chromium carbide particles get dissolved and uh, thereafter uh, uh, we cool it rapidly. So, that reprecipitation of the chromium carbide is avoided. Knife line, uh, so this is one way that post weld heat treatment of the weld metal uh, austenitic stainless steel weld metal is one uh, way to avoid uh, the weld decay or the loss of corrosion resistance due to the sensitization. Another method is that uh, since the chromium carbide is formed by reacting with the carbon. So, if the steel is uh, developed or the steel is developed using the low carbon content or the stainless steel to be welded is having very low carbon content then of course, the chromium carbide precipitation can be avoided. So, especially normally the steels have austenitic stainless steels have 0 0.05 to 0 0.08 percent of the carbon. So, these uh, tend to precipitate quite rapidly uh, after interactions with the chromium, but if the steel is having like 0 0.02 percent very low carbon content then this tendency for chromium carbide precipitation is reduced and which in turn helps to use the which in turn helps to uh, improve the uh, uh, resistance for the weld decay. Another is another method is is to add uh, a strong carbide formers in the austenitic stainless steel. So, strong carbide formers like niobium and titanium are commonly added. So, whenever these are present, so carbon reacts with these rather than the chromium and so the chromium carbide precipitation is avoided. So, whenever these uh, elements are added, the, the, uh, uh, the chromium carbide precipitation tendency is reduced. So, then in that case we call it like a stabilized stainless steel. A stabilized stainless steels are not prone or sensitive for the weld decay due to the chromium carbide precipitation, but certainly these are so sensitive for another kind of problem and that problem is called a knife line cracking. Knife line cracking problem occurs near the fusion boundary and uh, this also takes place due to the precipitation of the chromium carbide, but under the different uh, kind of the circumstances to understand that we will quickly see this uh, diagram. This uh, one we will be having say niobium and uh, titanium of course, it will have carbon and uh, chromium. So, whenever the weld is made, so the regions very close to the fusion boundary where in the niobium, titanium all these carbides will be decomposing while the at locations away from they will not decompose and uh, they will have the niobium or titanium carbide stable. So, if the carbon is not going into the solution then it will not have tendency to form chromium carbide, but very in the locations very close to the fusion boundary which experience very high temperature for longer time they will be there the uh, decomposition of the niobium and titanium carbide will be taking place. So, the carbon will be going into the solution. So, uh, so initially during the heating due to the high temperature exposure. Uh, for long for longer period the niobium titanium etcetera they decompose and carbon is released so this portion due to the rapid cooling uh, due to the rapid cooling in the cooling regime chromium carbide or titanium or these uh, niobium carbides are not uh, precipitated again because time is very less due to the fast cooling so the chromium carbon etcetera they remain they remain uh, in the solid solution as it is without interacting with the titanium or with the niobium. So, during the either subsequent passes or during the post weld heat treatment if uh, or during the service if the weld such kind of the weld joint is reheated in that case. So, the weld having the in this region very close to the fusion boundary having the niobium, titanium, chromium etcetera and carbon in elemental form such kind of system when reheated uh, 
re, during the reheating during the either during the service or during the post well heat treatment will be heating commonly like say 7, 600 to the 800 or 900 degrees centigrade. So, this is very favorable temperature we rarely go for the temperature to for the higher temperatures where titanium and niobium can form. And that is why uh, during the service or during the post well heat treatment whenever such kind of temperatures are experienced by this steel it again forms the chromium carbide and such kind of formation again leads to the, uh, the same kind of problem like deficiency or depletion of the chromium in certain areas as compared to the other, other areas and that leads to the uh, precipitation of the chromium carbide. But in the regions very close to the fusion boundary and this occurs over extremely narrow region like this and uh, this uh, and wherever it occurs only that area is affected by the loss of the corrosion resistance and that is why this one and so the crack will be developing only along this thin line or thin area that is why it is called a knife line cracking or hair line cracking. The solution for this problem is also the same that system is reheated followed by the rapid cooling so that everything gets dissolved and re-precipitation is avoided. Another thing is that having the low carbon content in the stainless steel can further uh, be used uh, as another method to avoid the problem associated with the uh, uh, associated with the knife line cracking. Uh, sigma phase formation is the another problem which is uh, encountered in high chromium austenitic stainless steel and uh, uh, such kind of uh, intermetallic phases uh, whenever they form or loss of notch toughness and uh, uh, impact resistance. Uh, these two are very badly compromised and that is why their formation is uh, avoided. Uh, uh, during the welding of the austenitic stainless steel. Apart from the similarly the problems are also associated with the ferritic stainless steel and martensitic stainless steel. Ferritic stainless steel primarily experiences the problem of loss of toughness in the heat affected zone due to the grain coarsening apart from the sensitization. Sensitization in the austenitic stainless uh, in the ferritic stainless steel uh, takes place very close to the uh, close to the fusion boundary not away from the fusion boundary like in case of the austenitic stainless steel and the kinetics of the uh, precipitation in the ferritic stainless steel is different than that is observed in case of the austenitic stainless steel. So, here I will summarize this presentation in this presentation I have talked about the use of the Saffler diagram as uh, primarily to see the kind of phases which will be present in the st uh, stainless steel and um, how the filler metal can be selected uh, suitably so that the composition of the weld metal is such that it has a 5 to 10 percent of the ferrite. Uh, at the same time we have also talked about uh, uh, the weldability of austenitic stainless steel and the commonly encountered problems related to the welding of austenitic stainless steel is specifically in the heat affected zone and the weld metal. In the weld metal it primarily poses the problem of solidification cracking and in the heat affected zone the weld decay knife line cracking and the sigma phase formation are the common problems. So, we have talked about the mechanisms that lead to their development and the methods which can be used to overcome the problem associated with the heat affected zone and the weld metal. Thank you for your attention.